What's up guys, Coach Az back again with another striker breakdown and today we're going to be taking a look at Justin the Highlight Gaethje. Now for any of you that are new to this series, the idea here is we break down a fighter's style, guard, stance, punches, kicks, combination, clinch game and just take a look at what it is that makes them successful when they're working on the feet. With Justin coming off an incredible win against Michael Chandler, it felt like the right time to break him down in the anticipation of a possible fight for the lightweight title. Now I'll admit, I go into this one with a little bit of trepidation. Justin Gaethje's style is basically the antithesis to my own. It's the complete opposite of the way I like to fight. I like to stay long and rangy, working behind my jab and my kicks. Justin doesn't. I enjoy throwing a head kick and attacking the body. Justin doesn't. I like to be light on my feet, pepper them with my long range shots and eventually build up and develop the power. Justin doesn't. But the reality of it is the fact that he doesn't do any of this is what makes him so exciting to watch and it's also really what makes him so effective. Let's get straight into it starting with his background. As is often mentioned with Justin, he started off with wrestling, starting as young as four years of age and going on to be an Arizona State champion and two times All-American. This then led him on to a career in MMA where he won the title in the World Series of Fighting before moving towards the UFC and even capturing interim gold. However, when it comes to looking at Justin's style within the cage, wrestling is the last thing that comes to mind. Gaethje is primarily a boxing heavy power puncher. He enjoys pressure fighting, which means he likes to push forward on his opponent and keep them on the back foot. His wrestling, although still present, is very much used to anti-wrestle, to keep the fight on the feet and keep them engaging in a fist fight with him. Being a very boxing focused fighter, his stance is very typical, orthodox, relatively balanced with his feet evenly distributed. He fights relatively flat footed and we'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes to the footwork. In terms of the reasoning for this stance, I think it's primarily because he likes to throw heavy hands. He doesn't particularly like to kick above waistline. He'll do a few body shots, but it's primarily going to be leg kicks that he enjoys and he enjoys working with some power. So going too narrow a stance means he's not gonna be able to throw those kind of power shots and going too wide a stance is going to negatively impact him in terms of movement where he's got that flat footed style as opposed to being up on his toes having a more balanced approach where your feet are closer in on your shoulders means that it's a little bit faster when he does need to move in and out of range he keeps a pretty classic boxing guard with his hands up by his chin, although he does tend to flare his elbows out slightly. And I think mostly this is down to the fact that he likes to lead off of hooks, crosses and uppercuts, as opposed to typically working in behind his jab. Justin is very good at shelling up when people are throwing loads of shots towards him and he implements good head movement, especially to get off that center line and set up his power shots over the top. You'll often see him implementing some soft fakes, and by that I mean little shoulder rolls, little movements with his hands, little movements with his head, just to keep his opponent guessing and make it harder for them to lock onto him when they're throwing their shots. As mentioned when we talked about his stance, his footwork is relatively flat footed. This doesn't mean he doesn't come up on the balls of the feet, especially when he is retreating or pulling to try and draw his opponent in. You will see him come up onto the balls of the feet, but generally speaking, he shuffles steps forward. The idea being that he always wants to stay well grounded so that he can develop and produce that amazing power that he's known for. His mission, his objective more often than not is to pressure you forward, to shut you down. And he does that by simply walking his opponents down and cutting off the cage. I will say that I think his footwork is the area that he has improved the most since working with Trevor Whitman. He's got so much better at pulling in and out of range and being able to select his shots more rather than simply put his chin down and swing. One of the most interesting thing about his punch selection is how rarely he works behind a jab. Justin Gaethje likes to start his combos off with power shots. As we know, he is trying to take your head off. So more often than not, you'll see him starting a combination with either a rear cross, a lead hook, or a rear uppercut stepping in. 
And generally speaking, he's only going to follow that with another power shot. So rather than peppering you with the jab or measuring his distance, Justin just likes to step straight into range on you and hit you with the big shots from the get-go. Now this isn't to say that he doesn't have a jab and that he doesn't use it, it's just not used as often. When he does, it's mostly a stepping in jab. He likes to throw it into the body and occasionally he'll take it in upstairs. But again, expect straight after that an overhand to come with the rear hand or for him simply to just use it to measure to set up his cross or get close enough to hit you with that uppercut. More often than not, Gaethje is headhunting. So you will always see him attacking to the head and only occasionally working his way down into the body. He keeps his boxing combinations pretty short and sweet. Again, where he's throwing big bombs and power shots, it's not like he's going for high volume in terms of his striking. He's trying to get close to you, he's trying to hit you, and he's trying to hit you hard. Now something that's really worth a study with Justin Gaethje is his kicking game. Not because he's got amazing dexterity, not because he's got a vast selection of shots, but because he does one thing really, really well, and that is leg kicks. In particular, it's the way he attacks his opponent's calves and debilitates them, stopping them from delivering their own power and escaping his. Looking at the way Gaethje moves, I think he's actually pretty inflexible. I think he would struggle to throw head kicks and I don't see him even working much of it to the body. And he's aware of this. So rather than spending plenty of time working on stretching and developing a head kick game, he has focused all of his attention of kicking into hitting the legs and he's got really, really good at it. What Gaethje does particularly well is working leg kicks from punching range. So rather than working it from the outside like many fighters do, where they'll try to maintain their range from you and slowly chip away at the leg, Gaethje will step right in to hit you with his hand combos and you won't see that leg kick coming. And this is what ends up happening, is people try to get close enough in order to punch Gaethje and they're gonna pay for it by eating up one of these leg kicks. Every time they step in, their leg is getting chewed up and they have to get more and more careful about when they approach and move forward. Now, of course, what this does over time is it reduces the opponent's mobility and it stops them A, from being able to attack, but B, also from being able to retreat. Justin Gaethje's game plan is pretty simple. He's gonna try and knock your head off. And if he can't knock your head off straight off the bat, then he's gonna start chewing up your legs to get you to stand still so he can knock your head off. Gaethje's kicks have very little telegraphing to them. He understands the damage comes from accumulation. He puts a lot of power in behind these kicks, but he understands and knows that he needs to hit about eight or nine of them to really start having the effects. So over the course of three rounds and possibly even five, he beats up that leg more and more over time. When it comes to chaining things together and combinations, again, Gaethje keeps it relatively simple. What he does well is combining that low kick in with his boxing. So whether that be starting with the kick to then go upstairs with the hands, or starting with the hands and finishing it on a kick on the way out. Rarely will you see Gaethje throw a combo that's larger than three shots unless he knows he's got his opponent finished, in which case you'll see him swing for the fences until the ref pulls him off. Another interesting area of Gaethje's game is his clinch work, which I think is vastly underrated. He does a great job of working elbows off of the break, but in particular, it's the way he approaches uppercuts and rear hooks in that close range. He understands the idea of getting someone's head down and driving uppercuts repeatedly up through the middle. Once their head starts to come up in order to protect themselves from the uppercut, he takes that rear hand and he starts bringing it round to shoot the hook. The beauty of that rear hook is that it allows you to work it at such a close range because it starts from a further back position than your lead arm. Finally, let's talk about the intangibles. The things that you can't quite put into word, it's not something that necessarily you can train in the room, but it's what makes Justin Gaethje who he is. The main one has to be the man's toughness and grit. He has no issue with absorbing massive amounts of punishments so that he can get his shots off on people. He shows zero fear when it comes to moving forward against his opponents. Sometimes it could be considered reckless, but again, I think the work with Trevor Whitman has shown great progress 
progress in him being more selective about his shots and absorbing less strikes himself. Beyond that, I think it's his general athleticism. He's an extremely fit athlete. It's very rare that you see him fatigue. And although most of his athleticism is based within his wrestling, that we don't get to see that often, we do get to see moments of it. When he defends takedowns, sprawls his way out, or manages to get the underhooks and lifts his opponent up, it's fascinating just how fast and effective he manages to do it most of the time. And finally, it must be said that the guy clearly has freakish power in his hands. Some people just have an ability to have that lead in their hands. They just hit harder. They can weigh the same, they could even weigh less than you, but there's something about the way their body moves and their mechanics and the way they've trained, maybe it's just that amount of fast twitch muscle fiber that just makes them that more much more explosive. I'd suggest go watching the James Vick fight and just watching the way that punch connects. If you look at it in the video, it doesn't necessarily look like the most incredibly perfect shot but the impact is so clear and apparent and the damage speaks for itself. So there we have it guys, that's a breakdown of Justin the Highlight Gaethje. If you enjoyed this breakdown, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, I'm trying to do one of these bad boys each week and I will see you on the next one.